Hey everyone, my name is Tony Cruz and I am here today to talk to you about Gary Chester's new breed, the unbelievable book put out by Gary decades ago. Still one of the best sellers out there. I had the great fortune of coming into Gary's life when I was nine years old. It's a long story and Katrina and I are working on a documentary for Gary's life. Part of that story will probably be there, but just, just so you know, I studied with him for 10 years and uh, from when I was like nine years old, he didn't really take young kids, but he took me and this other young kid. Our fathers used to go and you know, we would have this competition kind of thing and, and it made us practice. It was a wonderful experience. And that was pre-systems um, and it was 19, late 1970s. I was with him for 10 years and I can't tell you what an inspiration he was to me, not only as a teacher, but as a father figure. Um, you know, my parents had gone through a divorce and he was, he was just, he was a solid guy. Also wanted to say how important this was to me because it is helping to honor Gary's daughter, Katrina Chester, who has spent the last 30 plus years fighting for Gary's integrity and his honor through all that is his name, all his work, his recordings, and especially the new breed. It is uh, Gary incarnate and being one of the early guys that watched the systems grow. I hope that I can add some nuances or stories even that would help you appreciate the deepness and the importance of these systems. When you really study them, they are life-changing. They will, they will get into parts of your brain and your body and your soul that, that surpass your musicality, believe me. So what I thought I would do today is the first system, and just a piece of it, by the way, because I've come across so many students and so many fellow drummers who have said to me, yeah, I've been through the new breed. I've played that book. And, and immediately I think to myself, if you've just played the new breed once, you're missing most of what's in here. One of the things that I wanted to point out to you was that he writes here, practice tips for systems. I suggest practicing each bar at least four times or as many times as it takes to get a good understanding of what you are playing. And I feel like students just try to whip through a page or get a whole line or, and there are phrases in there and there are melodies in there. But when you're practicing this at ground zero, you really need to just hone in on the bar. Once you start to do that, you'll see the commonalities and how the, the, the notes move. For example, dotted eighth and sixteenth might be on the one in one bar, but then it's on the three in another or in two in another. And you have that packed in your brain already. The other thing is it says start slowly and relax. And again, I, I've seen so many people and even some YouTubers, you know, doing these things at tempos that are great, but there's so much going on. Um, I'll share this story with you. You know, Gary would ask you to, to, to take a system. And again, this is pre new breed, right? This was developing. So we would play it and he'd say, okay, play this at 82 or play this at 65 and bring it back to me. And so we'd go home and we'd practice hours to get these things together. And then you'd come to the lesson and you'd play it. And after four or five bars, he said, okay, great. Um, I'm going to put the metronome on 50 now, and I'd like you to play it there. And can I tell you how many, how many guys like couldn't do that because it was just, they were practiced at 80 or at 65. And then the 50 where all that room is, that was the lesson. There's nothing wrong with slow. You have to have all of the components of it at all the speeds. And that's what practicing is. He goes on to say, the tendency is to rush through each measure and get right to the end. That is not the point of the exercise, although you will be able to do that after you have mastered each individual measure. After you become familiar with the technical coordination aspect of each system, then you can work on feel, groove, dynamics, application for a variety of musical situations. These systems all work together. Try to work through them in order as they are designed to be practiced that way. Master these systems and you will have an incredible variety of musical ideas to be called upon as you need them. I wanted to pick apart some of the first system, which is just the straight 16ths with right and left hand, no flamming. Many people bypass the system because it seems like it's easy, but there's a lot of great stuff in there. And system one is the 16th notes on the hi-hat where both hands are playing 16th notes and um, your job is to not flam. That's the difficult part. It sounds easy, but especially at tempos, uh, different tempo changes, that, that, could, that could be a problem for some people. So you really, really want to hone in. That's the crux of this exercise. Make sure that your hands are doing the exact same thing. Now let me just back up for a minute. It's really, really important that you sit upright, that you're not crouched 
you know, you're not leaned in or leaned back, your, your shoulders are not tight. You want to make sure you're relaxed on your instrument. Um, and make sure that your foot is flat on the hi-hat. Um, try not to keep your heel up just for because we're trying to ground ourselves here. And I'll get more into that when we speak about the bass drum line. But just want to get a straight 16th note here. We're at one. Let me take a minute to get it, to get it even, but listen to it. And as you're doing that, feel your hands, your fulcrum. Make sure your hands are doing the same thing. Make sure your fingers are wrapped around the stick. Each stick is the same exact feel, right? Again, relax it and lock into that quarter note. So you're subdividing that quarter note by playing these 16th notes, right? Okay, so you're relaxed. You're breathing, you're playing your 16th notes, you're not flamming, your fulcrums are the same, your spine is straight, and now you're gonna read, I'm just gonna read the first line of page 18. I'm not gonna do the whole system because I wanna go through nuances with you today. All right, so just the first line, page 18, and the melody is 3A. Here we go. One, two, Okay, again, that was the whole line, but don't be afraid to, to, to bar them out, right? First line, first bar. Over and over again. And if you play it in time, as you know, if you play it right on top of the beat, you'll, if right with the beat, you'll, the, the, the metronome will disappear. bar. Last bar. As drummers, we, we have this tendency to hit the bass drum and the cymbal hard, especially the hi-hat. So please, guys and girls, please avoid doing this. We don't want that. That defeats the purpose of the system. The system, again, is to make sure that everything is working separately but in unison, right? Really, really important. Okay, so we, we got that. That's probably the easy part of this, but Gary was big on the count. Can you count the quarter note? Can you count the upbeat eighth note? Really, really important because it's a fifth voice. It's difficult and I've seen many people give up on it. And you can play the system without that, but I think you're missing all the special sauce by not counting. So you, you wanna make sure you get the, the quarter note and the upbeat at least. Right. This is also gonna help your breathing. Now let's talk a little bit about that. It became obvious to me, and I don't know if this is the right way, it just works for me, but um, if you're counting or you're moving your mouth, you don't have to always push air out. For example, you can go one, two, three, Four. Four. So as you're breathing in, you could still keep your mouth moving. That's, that's a way to focus on your breathing, which is a really important part of playing this instrument. As opposed to going one, a two, three, that could hyperventilate you, especially if you're at a faster speed. So however you're comfortable doing it, but just be mindful of it is what I'm trying to say. There's no right way. Everybody's got their own way of doing things. And that's what I love about this instrument. I love about being a drummer and, and being part of this great community is that we all have our approach to this instrument, but this is just, again, giving you some ideas of nuance through the, the great Gary Chester, okay? So here we go, I'm gonna count the quarter notes. You don't have to, you can make up a sound. I'm gonna probably, I'm just gonna make a sound. I'm not gonna count the numbers, one, two, three, four. So, pop, 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 
Again, that, that quarter note you're singing is on and off the beats that you're playing, so there's something going on there, right? So try to pay attention to that. Where is the quarter note you're singing in relation to your bass drum? Let me do it again. Pop, 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 pop. How about the upbeat end? One end, two end, three end. So you got the quarter note there. Keep that at the quarter. You don't want to do this. That's beautiful. We don't want that. We just want straight sixteenth notes here. No accents. You can put that on later. And 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 and. and. When you're spending all this time with the Gary systems, you do them over and over again and you think to yourself, okay, what can I do to make it even harder or more convenient for me? And I thought to myself, people who play melodic instruments are responsible for all the scales and all of the chords that they play on their instrument. I mean, you could probably make a great living playing just a couple of progressions, but if you really want to learn this instrument, you should be all up in all of the pieces of the subdivisions. And so I like to include in my counting, in my practicing, to sing the upbeat sixteenths, the E and the U, uh, because those are really, really displaced and they, and they will really play with your brain in a, in a way that you're probably not used to. And so this is frustrating until you get a feel for it. One E and the two E. So you're gonna sing the E's here. E, 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 those are the E's. Plays with your brain because you really want to play that quarter note. As drummers, we want to be on the quarter note or the upbeat, but that E, to pick that out, is a challenge. So let's try the anticipation, right? The uh, which I always tell students usually stands for anticipation because that's where you, if you push that, that's how people rush. So you want to really make sure that your uh is right before. Actually, you want to ornament the quarter, right? So uh, 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 very, really important, especially in phrasing and music. That uh is important. So here we go. The uhs. Uh, uh, uh. And sing with that metronome. Uh, 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 uh. So the last one is to count the rests. This is a tough one uh, and can be discouraging. When you're playing and you're hitting a beat, are you thinking of the rests? Probably not, right? You're just reading the notes and the rests are happening in between. Flip that upside down. Sing the rests and envision what you should be playing. I mean, imagine the, the value you'll get out of that if you can, I don't have to say master it, but at least spend some time in that forest where you can count the rests and envision what you're gonna play. Two, ready, go. E and two E, a three and a four E and one and a two E and three E, a four and a E and two E and three E, a four E, a one and a two and a E and four E and. Okay, let's give that a shot now with playing it singing those rests while you're actually playing what's there. One, two, E and two E, a three and a four E and one and a two E and three E, a four and a E and two E and three E, a four E, a one and a two and a E and four E and. Thank you.
you for watching. I hope that was helpful to some of you for clarity and concept and approach to these wonderful systems by the great Gary Chester. In Gary's honor, I will be doing more of these videos and um, sharing some of the wonderful things that have come out of them for me. And uh, again, loving to share with this great community that we're, we're all a part of. And so I uh, wish you all the best. And if you like it, put a thumbs up. And if you have any comments, feel free to make them. And uh, look forward to the next one.